Hey, you know, lately I've been quoting, I've been quoting the piano man. Because we're talking about aloneness or loneliness as being a widespread disease of our time. That people are very lonely. People feel alone in the world. And that line from the song, it's just brilliant. They're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. There's a difference between loneliness and aloneness. And so people think when you're lonely, you go to a party. And for a while, you don't feel so lonely. But then you come back to your empty house and you're still lonely. And the song is saying, no, you don't come back to your house and you're still lonely. You come back to your house and it's worse. Now you're alone. Loneliness can be shared, but aloneness can't. So when a person feels completely alone in the world, their, their, entire, um, their entire defense system collapses and they become vulnerable to every passing disease. So it's literally a health hazard to feel alone in the world. How would you how would you address to people this concept that are, that when when a, when life when life circumstances have given it that people are alone, whether it means they haven't found their significant others, or they don't they don't have children, or the children are out of the house. Like somebody commented that he feels that Judaism is a is a religion for families and for young people. How would you how would you address that? We're, we're where would uh, where does a person fit in if he doesn't fit into families or doesn't fit into young people? Yes, uh, so part of the solution to not being alone or the solution to aloneness is marriage because marriage is an intimate relationship and only intimacy takes away the aloneness. Sharing a drink takes away the loneliness temporarily, doesn't take away the aloneness. Sharing a house, living together, does not take away the aloneness. Sometimes even marriage doesn't. Because even though it's a functional relationship, it doesn't have the intimacy that makes you feel joined. And only when you're joined are you not alone? But the truth is that you are created not alone. That's why it's so important to know that your creator has an intimate investment, an intimate connection to every one of his creatures. So you're never alone, even if you're all by yourself on an island. Every moment of your life is meaningful and significant to God. Every moment, not just the totality of your life, but every individual minute of life. So God gives you a minute of life with, with a purpose, with an intention. He doesn't give you a wholesale package. Now here's 70 years. Have fun. <laughs> it gives you every minute, every breath is an is a individual gift. Like the manna in the, in the desert. Every morning, fresh manna fell to the doors of the tents. It wasn't, here's a bunch of food, it'll last you 40 years. No, every morning, breakfast in bed. So God gives us every minute 
intentionally, mindfully, thoughtfully. So there isn't a minute of your life that he is not thinking about you because in that minute he is giving you life. Obviously he's thinking about you. So you're never alone even if there are no other people. Now from that relationship we are empowered or enabled to create a somewhat similar relationship with another human being. But if we don't have that prototype with God, then we don't know how to make it with another human being. And that's why uh, marriages today don't have the power or the magic that they used to have. I was talking to this teenager and she says, I, I, I'm in love with my boyfriend. I said, how do you know it's love? She says, it feels so good. It's, it's so exciting. I said, how do you know it's love? Have you ever loved anybody before? She says, no, this is the first time. Well, if it's the first time, how do you know it's love? If you don't come from a loving experience, how do you know that you are in love? You don't even know what it is. So if you don't come from a meaningful, intimate creator, then when you meet another creation, how do you know whether you're bonded, not bound, bonded, whether you've become one, you haven't become one, how are you going to know? What are you going to compare it to? Particularly if you didn't have a very close relationship with your parents. So you're treading water. You're hoping it's intimate. You're hoping it's bonding. You're hoping it's meaningful, but you don't really know. You've got nothing to compare it to. So out of desperation, you compare it to other people's marriages. Look, that couple is really happy. Yeah, from what you can see, that's a pretty shallow picture of to, to base your life on. So the way we believe in God, the way we relate to God, has a large effect on how we relate to our marriage. And that's why it is so important to get to know God. It's your earliest experience. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.